Dan, this is Hell. I play drums. Rick, this is Hell. Guitar. <laughs> so you finally made it to Montreal after uh, the last show was cancelled. Or something happened the last time. Uh, yeah. That was when we got... In, I guess it was like way, way out west in the States. We got stuck like for days and days and days in the snow. Oh, yeah. So, Worst couple of days. At that ever. point. How'd you survive? <laughs> Yo, honestly, I have no idea. Yeah. We were stuck in this shitty little rest stop for over 24 hours. We're like, oh, whatever, we'll hang out for a little bit. There's like a buffet. So we sat and ate for hours. And we had no I, was going, I was going crazy. I was going crazy. Just, Just in this one little truck stop, there was like a, a section where like all the truckers were, there was like a big lounge where all the truckers were watching, uh, what is that show? That guy that rides a horse, what's his name? Some like western show. Some like, guy that rides a horse. Yeah, I don't know. We just watched it for hours. And it was just real bad, real uncomfortable. Slept it was in, the in van. Wyoming, which is like the boringest place in the history of, of geography. Yeah. It was crazy. It actually, the whole entire thing lasted more than 24 hours. We were at one place for about 24 hours. And then finally, the weather let up a little bit. The weather was essentially fine, but they were worried about uh, wind from like knocking snow from the sides of the roads onto the road, so we drove, and we were so psyched to get on the road. We drove for about, like, 10 miles, and it closed the road down again. It was terrible, but, uh, it was crazy. I remember one point during the night, we just wound up sleeping in the van. Looking outside, it looked like, uh, Empire Strikes Back, the, <laughs> like, the first half hour. So I watched it on my iPod and went to sleep. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I think it was, it was last, last year, and we were driving across, like, the western Canada. We flipped the van over. That might have been two years ago. I don't remember. It was, it was... Some, something so we didn't really like want to drive in that anyway yeah. so at that point like every place we were about to go was like storm warnings so we just kind of took like the most southern route that was clear and just uh i think we actually went home for a couple yeah, of days we went home you know but it took us like three days to get across the country we wound up missing i think like all together maybe like five shows what are your impressions of the culture here in Canada, I guess, compared to the States or just on its own? Yo, Canada, <laughs> Canada is more like Europe than the United States, which is weird, I w in my opinion. I think we just feel that way because we're from the States and we're so used to the States, so any di place that's different might feel like Europe because we go there so often, you know? It's different, obviously, you know, in French Canada they speak French. It's different, it's weird. The girls are amazing in Canada. Amazing. Yeah. Like girls like per square foot compared to like Long Island. It's something else. It's really something else. Hey, look to you can't see the examples that walk by because it yes. nullifies the whole theory. <laughs> well that one. Right? Which that guy sitting Dress? there? Yeah. <laughs> the, the guy sitting on that chair. This guy on the chair. <laughs> it looks like the guy from Sex in the City actually. Okay. Mr. Big? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit. I've never watched that show. I don't even know what that show he is. He loves that show. He loves that show. He has it on DVD. I went to see the movie with my girlfriend. <laughs> what do you think of it? I thought it was good. She was she was kind of bummed. Did you see the movie? All right. Well, I don't care if I'm ruining the ending. You know the ending they wind up doing exactly what he wants to do in the end? She was all like, why'd they wind up doing what he wants to do in the end? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> he pays for everything. What do you want? You know, you want to be a... How old is she? She's like 40 years old or something? You want to be a 40-year-old, you know, moocher who buys a bunch of shoes? Do what the guy says. And my girlfriend's probably going to yell at me now. What's she saying? So do we have to go home? Can you hear that? So do we have to go home? Because so I told that blacklisted didn't make it over the border. So yes, do they you have, have to go, go home. home? <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the border with those guys? They, they got denied. They always get denied. So, uh... It was, I think there's their fourth time trying to get over. It'll be their last time trying to get over, I believe, which is a big bummer for everybody involved. Like, Have they been to Canada before? I think they were here once. One time? A long time ago? Long time. That's a bummer. I know so many kids were so psyched, and it's like, now we're on tour by ourselves. Yeah. Plus, every time we do a tour with Blacklisted, something like circumstantial happens, and we don't get to like finish the tour together. It sucks. Talk a little about uh, being on... Trust Kill Records, legendary hardcore label. What, I guess, releases influenced you guys uh, from their back catalog growing up, and what does it mean to you being on the label? <clears throat> I'm I'm a big Poison the Well fan. 
for one. Definitely a big fan of uh, the drumming. Ryan, Ryan yeah. yeah, Ryan. This has been a while since I toured them. Uh, big fan of his drumming, and yeah, that definitely influenced me a lot. And just trying to think, who else? Most Precious Blood, of course. Walls Jericho. Yeah. Yeah, big fans of a couple bands on there. Um, Ro Roses Are Red, you know. Crash Romeo? Huge Crash Romeo fan. <laughs> uh, obviously, December was like such a big deal for like that style. Which is, um, I remember like when I guess Metalcore started to get big. I was really kind of like, eh, I don't like Metalcore. I don't like Sick of It All. But then I was like, oh, this album's good. And I like this band. I like this band. But it's, uh, that was cool. Cause by the time I like, you know, by the time Metalcore started getting big, you know, I was already, you know, I was into hardcore for for a little while, you know. And Poison Well was one of those bands that was like, you know, like we were just saying before, you know, like makes you like think different of, of a genre, you know. Yep. And uh, despite what anybody thinks, I don't think Poison Well has ever put out a bad CD. So, um, you know, saying there's other like newer bands, you know, Most Fresh Blood's recording a new album, you know. I think uh, Walt Jericho is consistent, you know. Their first stuff was great. You know, every, every time I hear one of their albums, I don't know why, but I always kind of just like. They're like, oh, they, I guess it's because like, they always put out good stuff. I always think, like, you know, they can't put out another good album, and they always put out something solid, mm -mm. which is awesome. I think a band being consistent is, like, a great compliment, in, in my opinion, because someone said that, but I, mean, I think it's cool. It's hard to write an album, like, once, a good one, let alone, like, eight. But I think they, what, I think they're, they're like, writing their fifth album right now, or sixth album. Was it Jericho? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. You know, then they got, you know, like, First Blood's new album, you know, it's going to come out at some point, you know. First album was amazing. So I'm sure a second one's only going to be better. What kind of values do you guys hold in terms of hardcore values, political, social, anything along those lines? Um, I know to me, like, I'm, 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 like, real big on this. Like, even though, like, we're in a band that's on a label that's not, like, a traditional hardcore label. And, you know, like, sometimes we do touring with, like, bands that, like, aren't, you know, like, an internet-hyped hardcore band. You know, like... To me, that's not really what it's about. You know, what it's about is like, you have something to say and you have something to feel, you want to express it, you know, put your all into it and support it how you feel is right to support it. And I think that's something we've always, like always done. You know, and we wanted, to, when we first decided that, you know, we want to do the band full time, and, you know, we want to find a label to do, you know, our full length and, and all this stuff. Like, it was never like, oh, I don't know about Trust Kill because like, they might do this, but they're not this or that. Like, and I, I think people who put that whole thing, like I said, like you know, Trustkill got their name mainly by doing kind of like, uh, like metalcore stuff in the beginning. And I know there's certain bands that are like, ah, oh, you know, fuck this label because of this, and fuck that label because of that. It's like, even like the term, like, like it's a a label. You know what I mean? And like something like that. Like if the people that work at the organization that's gonna play your record support what you're doing. And, you know, they're, you know, I, mean, I think that's all it's about as far as, like, record labels. If you could, you know, you respect the people and what they're doing and vice versa, you know, and they're going to help you do what you want to do and, again, vice versa. I think that's what's really important as opposed to, like, oh, well, kids think this label, you know, is all about this and, you know, the kid that wears these type of clothes is going to buy a record if it's on this. It's like, and we even got pegged with, like, oh, you guys are selling out because you're on Trust Kill. It's like... <clears throat> That does, like uh, that doesn't make any sense to me. You know, there was never like, oh, you know, be under my label. We'll throw all this money at you, and we'll do this and that and this. There was never any of that. There was never like, you must do this. Yeah, right. Tr Trustville never once told us, you know, how, what to put on the album, what to do in our video, anything like that, what to wear, nothing like that. We caught a lot of slack, <clears throat> like kids thinking we were gonna start wearing makeup. Like, come on, really? Like, you know, none, none of that type of stuff. You know, when, when we wrote our Sundowning, the first album we did on Trustkill, like, we showed it to Josh from Trustkill. He didn't have any sort of input on it, you know what I mean? He wanted us to have our, like, you know, artistic freedom, and he let us have it. And, you know, we, and, he, and he loved it. And even if he didn't, he wouldn't have told us, like, you know, oh, he's not a producer, you know what I mean? He's, he's not some, you know, huge label exec like you know trying to come down on us he let us have 100 percent freedom as far as that goes you know he, he just helps fund it yeah. you know and and you know gets our cds in stores which is great like that's what we want